Despite the simple statement that thoughts become things, there seems to be no shortage of people unable to manifest their desires. In response, a whole new market for teaching has sprung up, offering people the secret to the secret. In this edition of The Temporal Reverie, I want to talk about when manifestation doesn't work. First, I think it's important to understand manifestation today in the larger context of human spiritual evolution and the emergence of humanity's spiritual gifts. Then I want to take a moment to discuss solutions being offered to get the Law of Attraction to work for you. But perhaps even more importantly, I want to ask the question of whether or not we ought to expect to receive everything we want, or whether life sometimes calls on us to trust a larger wisdom that may not include granting our every wish. The incredible potential to change reality that is the birthright of human consciousness comes to each of us through our connection to the Divine Source. When fully developed, this ability will make bending reality around us as natural and as effortless as bending an arm. But we still have a long way to grow. Manifestation is one of the first rudimentary forms of what will eventually evolve into spiritual mastery over the physical world. So one of the first things that makes sense to understand about manifestation is that in comparison to the full spiritual potential just now starting to express itself is that it's an imprecise technique. And while there are those with greater experience in manifesting, most people learning the technique, like most beginners, are imprecise in their mastery of it. This is something to be expected. Patience, time, and practice bring better results eventually. For that very simple reason alone, it's no surprise that we're not always able to manifest everything we want. One of the exciting benefits of living at this point in time is that now we have more opportunity than ever to benefit from many spiritual teachers, each of whom has their own voice and contribution to lift up both our individual as well as our collective spiritual gifts. But compared to how much there is to discover and master, humanity has barely begun this exploration of spiritual talents. It will take time for the full appearance of what I describe as Christ consciousness to take place within humanity at large. It should not surprise us that there's much to learn before we grow fully into these amazing gifts. I explore various websites and subscribe to various email lists to keep informed on what others in the spiritual empowerment movement offer. And one thing I've noticed quite a bit are the people they hear from who are doing their best to put the law of attraction into practice but not having any success. No doubt many people in the business of helping others make use of their spiritual gifts are sincere, but I see something they probably don't intend to say in their messages. While some are more circumspect in their words than others, the subtext from many of these teachers is that if you're not able to manifest what you want, you must either be doing something wrong, or else there's something wrong in your subconscious mind that blocks your success. In other words, there's something wrong with you. That could be a damaging message, no matter how carefully it's couched. While I think there are people who'd be more successful with a bit of coaching in how to keep their thoughts properly focused, I also think plenty of people can find manifesting challenging without doing a thing wrong. I also think it's possible for your subconscious mind to contain messages and programming that work against the efforts in your conscious mind to attract what you desire. The subconscious mind is by far the larger and more powerful part of your consciousness. If you have subconscious beliefs that run counter to the thoughts you form in your conscious mind, the sheer power of your subconscious can drown out the intentions in your conscious mind. There are plenty of people out there offering a program, tool, or technique for reprogramming your subconscious mind. Those offers could be worthwhile and perhaps might bring you success in manifestation. But I suggest taking some time to reflect a while on things you may say or do that indicate conflicting attitudes in the subconscious mind before buying anybody's solution. It's worth keeping in mind that even good people who earn a living selling a process for fixing your mind have a vested interest in you seeing yourself as needing to be fixed. It's worth spending some time in being certain you have conflicts in your consciousness to work out before spending money on anybody's repair kit. If you're not having much success manifesting your desires, you can accept the diagnosis of your pick of Law of Attraction gurus. Just purchase a set of tapping videos or meditation soundtracks or visualization protocols set about reprogramming your subconscious mind and wait for the cosmic vending machine to pump out everything you want. There's always someone standing by to help you open the divine game show for you. 
All of which begs an important question in my mind. Is it necessarily a given that even if you manage to bring your conscious and subconscious minds into complete alignment, that the universe will or should grant any re request we might make? Maybe the answer to a request we make is no. Maybe in the earnest rush for empowerment and the desire to have our needs met and our wishes fulfilled, we don't consider the possibility that our ungranted requests may represent the universe unfolding as it should. Maybe there is a wisdom associated with the divine source that understands better than we do that there is more to our journey in the theater of experience than popping coins of consciousness into the machine and expecting it to dispense anything and everything we want. There is teaching in my personal faith tradition that brings this possibility to mind. You don't have to look any more deeply than the language of perhaps the most frequently uttered prayer in Christianity to see what I'm talking about. Early in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus himself taught us to ask of God, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. If we are extensions of divine consciousness into the physical universe, if the universe itself is a product of divine creation and wisdom, then we have to at least consider the possibility that the greater good is granted not in the manifestation of our will, but in the surrender of our will to a larger pattern. For example, despite the fervent efforts within parts of the evangelical Christian church to combine their prayers into a mass manifestation effort to pray the gay away, the last time I checked, I and many others I know of are still gay. I often joke that we should have a competition between the pray the gay away team and the pray to gay to stay team, and we'll see which prayer God grants. Or to put it the way a legislator in Minnesota did very recently, how many more gay people does God have to create before we ask ourselves whether or not that God actually wants them around? Perhaps the occasional inability to manifest what we want is not a lack of imagination on our part, or insufficient control of our conscious thoughts, inadequate faith in what is possible, or shortage of commitment to what we desire. We might bring all those things into total harmony and invest all we have in the process of manifestation. We might have total agreement between our subconscious programming and our conscious will, and still not have what we want manifested. Maybe the answer, in the wisdom of the unfolding universe, is no. As the Dalai Lama put it, remember that not getting what you want is sometimes a wonderful stroke of luck. Rather than fold ourselves endlessly for not making the process work, perhaps it makes at least as much sense to take a step back and ask if there is a larger will that has a different result in mind. If our lives have a purpose, a destiny, then part of our human journey may bring us into contact with possibilities that while desirable in the moment, may have the effect of taking us away from that destiny. There are those who believe that before we incarnate, we make plans to embark on particular journeys, to learn particular lessons, or arrive at particular destinations to help others. If that's the case, then we may along the way, operating from a lack of conscious awareness of those choices, find ourselves wanting things to happen in life that would be counter to that currently unknown mission. In one of the Harry Potter stories, Dumbledore takes Harry to a cave to retrieve an important artifact, but in order to accomplish the mission, Dumbledore must first drink every bit of cursed water in a bowl. He insists that Harry continue to feed him the water no matter how much he begs for him to stop until the goal is reached. Dumbledore knows the task will be painful, and in the moment he will forget the importance of success and ask for something that would defeat the larger objective. And sure enough, moments later, Dumbledore pleads with Harry to stop making him drink the cursed water. But Harry remembers what Dumbledore has forgotten, that no matter how earnest his pleas of the moment, he must refuse. I think life often works that way with us. Before we incarnate, we commit ourselves to things in our journey, call them soul contracts, karmic obligations, agreements to important lessons we must learn. Whatever you will, there are things we pledge ourselves to in this lifetime. And then we enter the theater of experience with all of that knowledge buried in the subconscious mind as our newly awakened conscious minds start down our path. And along the way, we find something that we believe we want. Sometimes we are utterly convinced the thing we desire is something we need very much. And sometimes that desire is in harmony with our journey, our commitments, and the path toward them opens to us. But sometimes that desire of the moment, believed wholeheartedly, but absent the memory of more important aims to which we long ago pledged ourselves would defeat our mission, rob us of our purpose, steer us away from our intended destiny. 
I believe in moments such as those we are Dumbledore begging for something to change that cannot change without defeating a greater and momentarily forgotten purpose. And God is our friend Harry, aching beside us out of a desire to grant our every wish, but knowing that the wish of the moment cannot be allowed without the cost of dishonoring a higher goal, calling, karma, or mission. Sometimes, in the moment, the loving answer must be no. I know this sounds so abstract, but in no small measure I speak from the pain of my own disappointment and feeling of powerlessness in being unable to manifest something of deep importance to me. A relationship that I valued tremendously had been gradually collapsing. I tried to manifest healing for that relationship, but no matter how earnest my faith and conviction in reconciliation, all my focus to turn the situation around seemed to go for naught. You see, I still believed what the advocates of the Law of Attraction asserted, my former partner among them, which is that anything is possible, even healing a broken relationship. To this day, I believe without doubt that I had done all the teachers of the secret said you should do. I imagined the healing, believed in it, was fully committed to it, and have no doubt that the most important yearning of my heart was unified at the conscious and subconscious levels. There are many things about that relationship that will certainly take a long time for me to come to understand fully, but this experience has taught me a few things about manifestation. No matter what the advocates of the Law of Attraction want to teach, you cannot have anything you want. Sometimes, that's a matter of not having one's subconscious beliefs aligned with conscious thoughts. And sometimes what we want would require a change in the free will of another human being, a usurping of choice that not even God will impose for any reason. And sometimes what we believe we want at one point in our lives would take us away from our true destiny. As George Bernard Shaw said, there are two great tragedies in life. One is to lose your heart's desire, the other is to gain it. Next time on The Temporal Reverie, we will consider the potential pitfall that focusing on manifestation can create in our lives. The message of empowerment and having anything you want is potent and attractive, but if we're not careful, it can also lure us into being more and more focused on ourselves until we are mired in the cult of self. While our disappointments vary when we don't receive what we have tried to bring about, there is a good chance, there is a good reason, why the answer is no, or not now, or wait for something better on the way. Because no doubt, the universe is unfolding as it should. I'd like to know what you think of this program. You can write me at the email address on the screen. My thanks to God for this chance to share with you, and may the gifts of love, joy, peace, and enlightenment come to you all.